Welcome to this lecture series in linear algebra. In this lecture, we learn about projection maps and let us recall what we need to follow. So first we need to know this, this notation. Uh, for an endomorphism T on a vector space V, we write this to mean that, and pictorially it can be represented that way. This is merely the composition of T with itself, and that's it. And we need to know about direct sums. So this we have seen many times. If we have a vector space V, then we write it as that if U and W are subspaces such that every vector in V can be written uniquely as the sum of a vector in U and a vector in W. So I'm sure you know what this is. And with that, let us proceed. So here are some problems for practice. And now let us get started. So fix a vector space. And let's say we have two subspaces of the vector space such that V is the direct sum of U and W. Okay. So with that data, we define the projection of V onto U with respect to W as the map so it is a map from V to V and the subscripts uh, of course re re refer to the two subspaces in question the first one is on which we are project, uh, projecting and the second one is with respect to which we are projecting that will be clear when we define this so what is the definition? the definition is For all, that is the definition, and we need to say a few words as to what this means. So, what we are saying is, you pick a vector little v, then you write it as the sum of a vector in capital U and a vector in capital W, and this can be done uniquely simply because the vector space V is the direct sum of U and W. So, that's what we are saying. This thing takes a vector v to the u component of that vector. You decompose this vector as the sum of an element in capital U and an element in capital W. And you output the, the component along u, so to say, pictorially. Suppose we have a map, sorry, a, a, a vector little v in the vector space v. So this, this denotes the vector space V and this is W, that is U and V is the direct sum of U plus uh, U and W. Of course, this diagram is a suggestive one. So first what we will do is we will decompose our vector V in two parts. Right? So this, this part, this is little u and that is little w so that the vector v is u plus w and we just output this thing this this is the output of this map on the vector v so one can also say and this is just an intuitive statement that you travel parallel to w and hit the vector space u and the point at which you hit is the point where you, I mean, that is the point which you output. So, I mean, it's not a very serious statement, but at least in this picture, that is exactly what is happening. Okay. So, that's the definition, and you can easily check. This is a linear map. Also, note, even though the target of this map is the entire vector space V, it takes values only in the subspace U. But it is convenient to have the target as the entire vector space V so that we can think of this as an endomorphism rather than just some linear map. It's just more convenient that way. So this is the general picture uh, and this is the concept of projection. It's a nice concept. And uh, let us see one concrete but very simple example. So here what we have is we have R2 and these are our subspaces. 
So u is the x-axis, which means what? Which means all these points. So this is u. And w is the y-axis. So this is w. And clearly r2 is the direct sum of u and w. And then the projection of the vector space r2 onto u with respect to w is simply this map. It takes this point to x. So if we have a point x comma y, that just, you just kind of drop this perpendicular, so to say, and obtain this point. And here I have made a mistake. So this, this point is x comma zero, and the output is x comma zero, it's not x, right? Because the output has to be r2. So I kind of made that mistake on purpose. Okay, so this is our map. And uh, you can easily see that this is the projection of the vector space R2 onto U with respect to W. Okay, so it's a very, very simple example. You can construct three-dimensional examples by yourself. And now let us, uh, yeah, so just one more thing. So here I want to define something. Uh, I should have done this in the previous page, but mm, let's do it here. So here is the definition. Let T be an endomorphism. We say that T is a projection if, if there is a subspace, there are subspaces rather, there are subspaces u and w of v such that two things happen uh, such that uh, v is equal to u direct sum w and t is the projection of v onto u with respect to w so previously we defined projection of a vector space onto a subspace with respect to a complementary subspace here we are defining projection period. So an endomorphism is a projection if you can find a decomposition such that the endomorphism is the projection coming from that particular decomposition. Okay, and now here is our main and uh, last thing for this lecture. An endomorphism is a projection if and only if it satisfies this equation. This is also called idempotence. So you call a call an endomorphism idempotent if its square is itself, just a name. And the theorem says that you have an endomorphism, then it is a projection if and only if this happens. Pretty interesting. The notion of projection was a rather geometric one, but this is an algebraic condition. So that's very nice. And let's prove it. So the easy part is if you have a projection, then then this happens. So that is an exercise. So if T is a projection, then clearly this happens. So we need to figure out the other direction. So assume this is the case, we want to show that T is a projection. Let me write that. Okay. So, we need to find a decomposition and show that T is the projection with respect to that decomposition. And uh, yes, I mean, if you believe this theorem, then clearly the image of T, I mean, if, if T is a projection, what is its image going to be? its image, or rather if you want to construct the corresponding decomposition, one part of the decomposition must be the image, right? If you consider this guy, what is the image of this guy? It, its image is u. 
and that is the first thing that is appearing in the decomposition that it comes from. So we already have a hint as to what could be the decomposition. So here is the thing. We will show that, first of all, we will show that. Maybe different color. Okay, fine. So let's draw some diagrams. So we have this map T and then T again. And since T squared is equal to T, this map is also T. So we have this funny looking diagram. And one can write this as follows. One can get another diagram basically. Just restrict that guy to the image of T. So this map by abuse of slight abuse of notation I will continue to write as T. It's the same map as the previous one except that we have restricted the target. And from here we go to image of T again. And this time let's write this as T tilde. But it is the same map in some sense. It takes a vector x and outputs T of x. Okay. And of course we have this composite. So this map also does what? It takes x and outputs t of x. So one can write this as t. Alright. So, so note that this is, sur sorry, this guy is surjective because if you pick a vector v here, or rather you, you pick something here, then it's t of v for some v, for some vector v. So that vector is here. You go this way, you go that way. What are you getting? You're getting t square v. But t square v is t of v because t square is equal to t. And therefore, we have surjectivity of this. If that wasn't clear, you can easily justify it for yourself. So this is surjective and hence this is surjective. Right? The surjectivity of this implies the surjectivity of that. That is a set theoretic statement. Nothing to do with linear algebra. All right. So we have t tilde is surjective and now we use rank nullity on this guy. So by using rank nullity on t tilde, we have the dimension of the domain of t tilde is equal to dimension of the kernel of t tilde plus dimension of the image of t tilde but t tilde is surjective so this is dimension of image of t so i kind of skipped a step because this is the image of t tilde but t tilde is surjective so this is just simply image of t and therefore by cancelling out this term we get this is the case which means kernel of t tilde is the trivial subspace. But what is kernel of t tilde? Kernel of t tilde is kernel of t intersection image of t. Right? So why is that? Well, what is kernel of t tilde? It's those things in the image which are killed by t which is precisely those things in the image which are also in the kernel of t. And therefore this is kernel of t tilde. So we have that and this implies by rank nullity, rank nullity theorem, that v is the direct sum of image and kernel. Why? Because the sum of their dimensions is the entire, uh, the dimension of the entire vector space immediately by rank nullity theorem. That is the rank nullity theorem, in fact. So, since we already have this, we must have that. So, this we have proven. And now we claim that our endomorphism T is the projection of V onto image T with respect to kernel T this will end the proof. So let's write this as u or maybe let's keep it this way. So let u belongs to <coughs> image 
and W belongs to kernel. Our goal is to show this. This is the final thing that we need to do. So, since U is an image, we have U is equal to T of X for some X, which implies T U is equal to T square X, but T square is equal to T and hence T square X is equal to T X, which implies T U is equal to U, because that is U, right? T of X is U. So T of U is U, fine. What about T of W? Well, W is in the kernel of T, so T of W is zero. So maybe I'll just write and T W is equal to zero since W is in the kernel of T. Therefore, <laughs> and we are done. This is what we wanted to do and that finishes the proof. Alright, so with that I want to end this lecture. As usual, like, comment, share, subscribe and I will see you next time.